when I saw these popping up, I let it go for a year or two to see if it was sustainable. Uh, and then I saw they weren't going anywhere, laws didn't really change. So I just got into this. A trademark of the GW Foggy Bottom campus is the line of food trucks on H Street. At any given time, there are at least five trucks ready to cater to the students of GW. However, the trucks are often overlooked and not given a second thought. Many students might not know much about the food truck industry and all that happens behind the scenes to create the delicious food they pick up for lunch. According to Forbes magazine, in 2009 it was reported that the food truck industry earned $1.2 billion and in 2013 it earned $857 million. Despite the drop in revenue, the industry continues to grow at an annual rate of 9.3%. Food trucks are becoming more and more popular as an affordable alternative to opening a restaurant, a feat that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. Alternatively, opening a food truck usually costs around ten dollars to $50,000. With lower costs, freedom to create unique food, affordable prices, and the ability to use social media to share the truck's location, food trucks are now the new craze of the food and service industry. We talked to five different food truck owners on GW's campus to ask them about their food trucks and all that goes into operating them. While talking to them, we found that there were three major aspects that define the industry. The background story from the owners and their food, the regulations of DC, and the competition between the trucks. Not every food truck business is run the same way. First, we asked the owners to tell us about the type of food truck businesses they own. I've been cooking for 40 years with friends and family, so my stepson asked me to come up and help run his truck for him, so I came up from New Orleans to help run the truck for him. He actually he has four trucks. Okay. I have three. Because besides this tasty kebab, we also own the tasty fry that's over there all the, the over day, and also the jumping, the yellow truck. In my experience, I mean, I, I, I started off with a tent and worked my way up. Compared to all the other ones you see in line here, this is the oldest food truck that you can see in all these food trucks here in line. Well, actually, yeah, we, we're the, the first ones to be on the street. While food trucks may seem like simple operations, DC food trucks must adhere to a strict set of regulations. Next, we asked them about the rules and regulations surrounding food trucks in DC. What are the regulations like? Very difficult. Uh, you need to get a lot of license. Is it very hard to get that? Apparently, yes. Okay. Now he does because you know everybody wants to get a food truck. To get my license, to get my food handling permit, I have to know all the regulations, take the that and everything else. Uh, just to get it to the inspection point is pretty ridiculous. Like you have to uh, submit a 3D rendering, a 3D rendering of the inside. Um, there are very specific areas we can't go, like small, um, highly populated areas where it could be a hazard or something. Yeah, see, most of the profit places are what they call lottery positions. You have to be on the lottery to get there. And every food truck gets three lottery positions per week. And so, yes, you do have to have a depot, um, which is the central location where you clean your truck. And these trucks can stay here overnight. They do, yeah. Well, so that's against health code regulations. Health code regulations state that all food trucks have to go back to their kitchen and board every night to clean and to prep the next day. How they get away with it, I don't know. Fans, I do. I will say this. You know, their, their guidelines, I, I would I would stick by them. I mean, some people look at it, they try to take shortcuts and stuff. But everything that they say for building your truck and things that you should have is for really, really safety purposes. So much. I, I, I really honor their rules and regulations. It's good. It's definitely a good super. Once they've met all the regulations, successful trucks, like the ones we've interviewed, rely on their food's ability to stand out and make them successful in the competitive market. Everything that's, everything that's not fried, that's on truck, I cook myself. Black and red fish, and red beans and rice, and gumbo, everything I, I, I cook myself. I think uh, is our unique food is the white sauce that we put on it. It's the tzatziki sauce that we put on every plate that they want to come to us. Because I wanted to be risk averse and go with cuisine that people are familiar with. The competition is healthy. It's healthy competition, you know. But I mean, I try not to do what other people do, and that's the only thing I can say. I have taste food. I don't worry about the. I know my 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.